Hello, Shirley Peters here. Thank you for joining me for another painting um, demonstration. I will be doing today a, a view of um, a city scene, which is a beautiful, um, I don't know if you can see that, I'll just hold it up really closely. Oh, you can't see it really, I'll get the light on. Um, I'll, I'll put it on the screen anyway. It's a, a lovely uh, inner city view of a pub and uh, some people waiting at a bus stop and a lovely golden light, which is from our fires at the moment. My daughter took this last night and sent it through to me. So uh, it's a lovely picture. I'll, uh, I'll see how I go painting it. I'm going to be using smooth um, arches. The arches um, hot pressed and it's a smooth surface. So it'll be interesting to see how how I go. It's not something I normally use, but I've got the block, so I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to use it up, and we'll see. I'll get my paints ready. Um, everything I use is listed below, and um, thank you in advance for watching. And if you like this video, can you click the like button and if you're not subscribed, also subscribe because that way you'll get to be notified when I upload a new video. Please, this is my studio, by the way. I'll just give you a little view before I lock the tripod in. So at the moment, it's very untidy and messy. But next week, it'll be just very neat and tidy because um, we're going to have an open studio and we're going to be, uh, when I say we, um, three other artists in, our str in the street that I live on, we're going to have a, an art trail and uh, it'll be fun. Okay, I'm just going to um, start with the sketch, which is basically um, the building looking like it's towering, of course it is, and I'll come back straight down. I'll do a um, bit of a hint of that um, balcony there. The main thing here in this particular picture is this big awning. And I'm going to come out to here. And I'm going to do a nice big curve. Nice big curve. Take that straight across. Okay. Come down into that. I'll just go quiet for a while while I sketch. I won't say much for a change. <laughs> yeah. Look, I've got some people here sitting a little bit distracting because they're sitting on chairs. They are, I'm talking. They're waiting for a bus. Right opposite the bus stop sign, which is about there. Near the other, the street tends to go around that way. So there are other windows and doors up there. And there's a couple of people walking. I'll put them in. Or one person, I'll make it two. And the uh, gutter goes out like that, comes around, nice little wedge shapes, it's got a little um, dip down, out that way. So at this stage I'm really trying to concentrate on making this picture as interesting as possible without getting too carried away with the detail. An old pub over the road there. Kind of looks like it's coming up the hill. A little bit hidden by a big sign, which I'll put in now so I don't forget that it's got to go in. And it's coming down to that point. The bus stop sign, I'll make that, I'll change it to there. The other one can be still there. So there's awnings over here that are quite uh, obvious because they're dark underneath. I'll just put a few a bit of crosshatch there to show that they're there. Otherwise I'll forget or I might not put enough 
enough emphasis on it. Couple of cars, street sign, probably a bit high, but doesn't matter. There are lovely looking lampposts and those lovely little lights that stick out, very lightweight. I love them. Uh, beautiful lines going across. I'll do those later. And here there's the odd little, I'll put the windows in on this side. I'll make a choice whether I put them on the other side. Um, I'll see how I go with the detail here. A couple of I like the way this green light, these green areas do define the shape of the building quite nicely. So that's the facade and that's got a lovely dip up the top there. I've got a bit of, made a bit of a stain there on the paper but that's okay. There'll be lots of stains by the time I finish. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Yeah, I love doing this. I love these sort of buildings. Aren't they fun? Now, the front door will be around about... Well, there's quite a high ceiling in there. I've got to make sure I get that right. Oh, I won't need to wrap that out. That's alright. Sign. Door. Inside the door. You can see both top and bottom, really. I don't know if that's right. Should I see that? Poster, window, poster, lettering across the road there, and those lines, they're important. And there is a lovely glow coming down from those. I'll probably put those people with a bit of shadow underneath them. This mob can have a shadow underneath there. And then I've got to grade it out to there. That's it. What I'll do first, I'll get some fresh water. I will do the, uh, the sky first because it is by far and away the biggest challenge to get that smooth uh, graduation between the blue down to the um, magenta colour at the base. First thing I'm going to do is uh, wet, wet it all the way down, supposedly a clean brush. So I've put water on and actually I'll, I'll go right over all the buildings. So I'll come back there and add colour to those as well and I'm going to keep it all fairly loose but the first lot of uh, colour I need is going to be the blue which is ultra for me ultramarine blue at the top I'll just mix a bit of that up here so I have plenty in my my kit let's make sure you can see me doing that yep and then as I come down, I'm going to be adding the yellow halfway down, halfway down. Well, I won't be adding yellow because that'll just go to green. I'm going to be adding orange. And then at the very bottom, I'll be adding magenta. So I'll get those ready at least. Head to a slightly cleaner water. Start with my blue. Oh. I load the brush with the blue and then I'll start at the top. Work my way down. Paling it out. Then in comes the yellow. Well, the orange should say. What I'm trying to do is try not to have too many uh, ridges. But of course it's not going to be easy. Now I'm going to come right down to the strong colour down here. And I'm going to bring it right down here to the base. I shall while it's still wet, I won't stop there. I'm going to add the warmth colour to this building because I do want a nice soft edge up there. I don't want it to be harsh. So this, just do this whole building that colour. And then I'll 
I've got the magenta colour coming in here. I'll go for a purple under here. Very strong. And then very strong blues back there. It's going to end up being green, but I'll use the blue at this stage. And I'll bring that down. Like that. Now the trick is not to play. The trick is to let it just settle. What I'll do is use the dryer. Turn it off so it's not too noisy. Okay, some fun. Now to have uh, a little bit of fun with colours. And I can start with the roof there if I wanted to, up the top. I'll just get a nice dark green on my brush. Actually, it's quite a bluey green. I think I'll go for the teal. Let's see how I go. No, not, teal, not bluey enough and the brush a bit too big. When I'm doing detail, I'll go for a smaller one. Get more teal out of this. Now what I'm going to do here is knock this blue back. I don't want it, don't, it's greeny blue, but I don't want it to be um, too bright. I don't actually want it to be as bright as it is in the photograph. I want it to be just a bit subtler. So I'll use my brush in a sort of a drawing way. Um, I might end up d just darkening this side of the building. After that dries, I'll run down with a bit of a shaded uh, um, blue colour to join it in with down the bottom here. So I'll get the magenta and the burnt umber out because I can see a lot of that colour down here. Just make sure I've got the right shade. make that disappear around the corner there. Blend it in. And where I'll pick it up with the dark underneath when that dries. I'll do some magenta over the back there on that little building behind on the roof. It's more of a purpley colour. You've got a little green in there so I'll do it I'll deal with that later. Put some darks under here, just to give myself a guide to start with because I'll be coming back under here very dark in a minute. And over the road there, um, a lot of interesting uh, areas, but I'll just quickly do what I'm doing here is large shapes. Um, without uh, detail, hopefully. And the purple is kind of, I'm using the purple as a, as a shading device rather than colour and later on I'll, I can add a little bit of colour to that. up 
any bits, any beads that are for sitting there waiting to be sailing down the page. I just don't want that to happen. That's my one pet hate of falling beads and I get them a lot. Now I'm going to just jump up the top there and put those blue windows in and hopefully the yellow behind won't be too uh, uh, what's the word distracting oh, I haven't got one there put that in there so I'm just putting the, the stronger color at the top and then I'll wash my brush out and then fade it out to the base that way it looks like it's reflecting the sky keep it casual you don't want to put detail in up there the whole picture has to have a feel of sketchiness about it so that means you sketch everywhere you can't just sort of focus on one part and get that really 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 neat and then go to another part and do it sketchy so sadly you have to do a sketch all over if you're going to do it this style and of course I have to listen to my own advice later on and stop fiddling so I'm just putting these shadows underneath the windows. I'm using a um, Carbazole purple. In fact, I'm using that moon glow now that I think about it. I, I reach into what looks like purple, but it is, I'm pretty sure it's moon glow and it's a fabulous color because it's already got a bit of blackness in it. It's not very, um, it's, not, it's not what you call a pretty purple color, which the Carbazole is. And I'm constantly having to knock that back so I'm just going to use a wet um, brush and bring that colour in there down because it's actually different to the others it's not a glass that it matters I'm going to put a bit of purple on this to give a bit of a shade there I'll run that across in fact I can't resist I'm going to come down with the shade on this side now. In fact, it's it's right at that point there. The shade really is. I'll run it over here. Yeah. Okay. Underneath this building, I'm going to do the very dark. Um, well, actually, I could start with a little bit of blue on the road to blue to uh, define the. Um, center line if I just darken around where I think the center line should be officer <laughs> so officer the center line is in the wrong place okay bring that tarmac down and around have some fun with that Bring it in very tight there because it's foreshortened. Okay. Now these figures underneath require shadows, so I'll just do my moon glow purple plus the French ultramarine. I'll put the figures in with the tip of the brush. And I'll have them walking in a certain way. I'll just run a shadow down like that and these other figures here one person sitting up beginning to see what it is it's a little bit confusing one person is sitting there at a bus stop and there's someone behind leaning against the wall and I think there's a child so let's just add a third figure there and they've got they're on the chair and that chair goes into the wall straight there like that and this, this wall comes down here okay I'm slowly getting it working out what's happening so I'll put a shadow under them it's quite a shadow there and there's a shadow over there from that lot so when I put shadows in what I like to do is wet the brush a little bit and just draw them down And then of course we've got other colours here, I'll run that across. 
to all these shadows. Getting that moon glow again on my brush, I will finish this ground here. It looks like there's some shapes that I need to take into account. And then very, very, very dark black underneath. Underneath that awning. Moon glow again. I'll see how black I can get that. I might need to add more blue and burnt umber to that. Gee, I'm running out of paint. Actually, I think that's ultramarine blue there too. So I'm trying to get a very black colour under there. There is a little white ball there. I'll bring that down. Take it in. This sort of painting here is not wash. This is more like you just you're painting like as if you were using any type of paint. It's just make it thick and then get it on, smooth out the edges, and hopefully you don't see brush marks. And this is where rough the rough paper works better. So that said, on the edges to smooth it out, to make it look good, sometimes just run like I'm doing there, I've got another line across. He's gonna, I'm going to do some verticals down the back there to make it look like this shop fronts. That's that man. Got a shadow behind him. She's got a shadow behind her. And that's the edge of my building at the front. I can't go too far into that. Right. Now this this is a, a, a nice red colour, but I will t I'll keep it toned down. I won't try and go the full on... Um, um, orange warm red that it is I'll just keep it to this shade pop these areas behind signs okay. a little step going up Underneath here, once again, very, very, very dark. Almost black. So I'm going to use black and see how black I can get the black to be. To tell you the truth, I find black to be pretty insipid with watercolour. I tend to have to make it up with the blues and the browns together. Make your own black. And if you have too much brown, it looks daggy. You have to keep it on the blue side. There we go, that's better. There's a sign there. Oops, there we go, running down the page. That's what I don't want. Okay, so I have to suck that back up. Get that out of there before it's too dark. Dry brush picks things up pretty good. Don't mind it actually. <laughs> now that I look at that graduation, sometimes it's not too bad. There's a sign there. I'll just leave an area for that. As I was saying, there's a sign up the top there, the Sly Fox. I'll leave an area for that. doesn't have to be all that much difference in tone. Oh, that's a bit high contrast, but that's it. I will come back, fix that up later. Going around these pictures here. They're posters, I think. Uh, and a window. Now, make sure I make the posters smaller. Windows much higher. In fact, the posters come down to the height of the um, door at the front. So the window has got a variety of different things happening inside it. So 
that'll be fun a bit later on. Oh, I can see it's got a reflection of a car. Wow, that's a challenge. Okay. Now, details. Keep going on with. Oh, I can put some shadows up the top while well, I've got the moon glowy purpley colour mixed, which is sort of like nearly always. I'll just finish these off. This looks like a shadow going around to that one. And then down. And this one has a shadow like that. Just emphasising. Yeah, I'm probably exaggerating what's there, but that's all right. There's a tiny little bit of detail needed here. Looks like a, a pole going down or a pipe. And then here is a lovely sign. I'll put that out there. Two rings of blue actually I think or green. Maybe it's that green colour that they've got. Either way it's too. But then I might put a little bit of support under that so it looks like it's being held up. Because there it doesn't seem to have any visible means. Get the green colour going again and give a little bit of emphasis to this this area. Just doing a, a, a vague teal blue colour. Now the door itself of the, of the uh, pub, very black. I'll fade that into nothing there. I'll use the moon glow and the blue. A little bit of the brown. I'll put two little handles on the door to make it look like it's a door. And then I'll put an edge down this side and then fill the rest in. poster. I'll put shadow down there. And I'll come back to that later. Now because I've got a slightly different tone on my brush, actually I might warm that up a little bit so it's a variety. When you put darks in darks you just want to sometimes add a little bit of colour to that darkness so that you get different darks. I'm going to go across the road onto that little building over there and make him the green that he is. It's a dark green so luckily that it will look deep with the blue already there. Comes down the back there to a couple of lines. And deep down in that area is a lot of windows. We've got the awning. And they've got I think they've probably got brick pattern on the front as well. Must be the fashion. Because this is all brick here. Vehicles, water. I'm just, just tapping away here to get these colours, um, a variety down there. Um, around the cars, again, I'm going down deeper into that area, underneath them as well. While I'm there, I'll just put this little bit of a street furniture in. Oops. Got this outside. I'll, I'll put the um, signage in here at the foreground. And I'll start drawing in the details of the guttering, which <laughs> It's not very often you find guttering to be a highlight of a picture, but I think in this case it kind of is. Okay, 
now some satis more satisfying. As you start putting more and more detail in, it becomes more uh, inspiring or interesting for the eyes. So I do want this beautiful teal aqua colour on these posters to come through, even though they're in the shade and they're supposedly not seen from the place with this colour over here, manganese blue, just put that colour up to there, while I've got the manganese blue I'll finish off this poster, some dark areas in there as well, lettering, white lettering so you have to draw the outside just a few strokes and so every chance here I'll be coming back over this with uh, with my lovely white gouache which I love to use just thinking of a bit more green is being reflected up here underneath those that awning just for the fun of it not really, but I'm just going to add it in. The actual floor itself has got, I will, I will put some bluey, a blue colour, like ultramarine blue and a little bit of manganese hue across up there. I'll re refresh the eye. Sometimes you can have too much purple and bluey colours and then you and the eye gets a bit tired of that so you go putting in some warm blues like the cerulean and before you know it it just looks prettier and it gives the eye a bit of exercise mm, that's it I think I've made that green a little bit too it hasn't faded away sometimes you put a colour down you expect it to fade and every now and then they don't and they stay dark so that's very annoying I'm just going to I'll use one of my um, trusty scratching out type brushes here and that takes takes things out. So I just want that to pale up. It should not be dark. That dark. Dark underneath the awning, yes. But not dark on the on the top of it because it's got the bright sky above. So we're coming in there a bit of scrubbing out, which I love doing. I could start with a black page and just scrub the whole thing out. I should do that one time. I guess it'll work. So, oops. I wanted to add green there, but I didn't need to pick up the whole tube with. I just want to add that. See how you put that green on top of the um, the purple, and before you know it, scrub it in. You've got some interesting greens that you couldn't dream of making up before they just come I love that right here we down the back here we still have a variety of I'm just going to run my brush across the wet brush blend that in a bit I don't want it too bright bits that I want bright I will come over later and uh, with the white brush even those people are knocked in back the uh, lettering up the top here Sly Fox I'll just put that in a little bit of a fudge. I think there's a little bit of a red dot above it. Let's see if there's a red dot in that one too. Now, where am I? I think I need to define this wall, this uh, side of the door here, a little bit better. It's a bit scratchy. So I use the side of the brush like that, and uh, it gives a nice. Oh. finish there's bricks because these are bricks sometimes I, I like to give a hint of the actual um, texture I suppose you'd call it and uh, just by the odd little line going across like that doesn't need anything more than that now I think I would like to a little bit scrub out now that I look at it 
that little shadow I put up there I'm not real happy with so I'm just going to scrub that out a little bit which gives a nice very nice um, texture and uh, to tell you the truth I think that all needs to be darkened up there so I'm going to do a wash over the whole thing um, over that side of it and that'll take it down so I'll turn it sideways I'll have to decide what colour to use and um, the fronts, actually the fronts of them are I've made an error here I haven't put that orangey brown in so I will do that now and that will make me happier I was just thinking it's not dark enough why isn't it dark enough so if I come down, yeah that colour that's nice so come straight down the hill out to that little baby I won't bother defining the yellow in that part I'm just going to come down here make that all darker orange shade which is more realistic it's the same over here so I'll put that on this side straight down to there that helps um, now that I see it it does wrap around so I'll just make a slightly darker version of what I just did I'll add some blue to it as well because it's on the shady side you see so I'm just going to run that straight down like that and then at the base square it up and I shall put it on that side of that one which is not as obvious suck the bottom up a little bit just a touch so that then it will even it'll come down it'll even out and I've got a little bit of a problem there so what I might do on that particular that's a fairly important part of the building so I'm going to just scrub that by scrubbing it I know I'm going to have a bit more control now I'm just noticing with this uh, hot press paper it tends to lift up a little bit it's not scrubbing as well as the um, the other colour I mean sorry the rough the rough version this is the smooth so I'm digging into a whole pile of greens here just to get a really dark green so that's the deep sea green I think is main, the main one there and I have to wait for those to dry I could probably put a little bit out there a little bit out there Just knocking that back. You can see this is a problem. I don't want that to be that light. Hoping you can see that. Mm -hmm. Going to darken that off. control the edge okay I'm going to do now a little bit of gouache work oh hang on there's a few more things I can do the um, the window details just a touch of those and I'll just add the, the I'll try and go quite pink on those because I'll just see how it looks sometimes you can add colors like this and it picks up the overall colour scheme and other times you can add colours like this and it just fights with them providing you don't overdo it and you can always come back and darken it if you think it's gone too far so that said while I've got this dark red I'm going to go I'm going to be a devil and go over this
Mm. That was an example of me using a brush that was too small. So I'll just blend it through one go. Now here, the front, I really want to make sure I keep this blended. So I'll just do a couple of little feathery strokes like that. Hopefully that will work. Back to the solid chisel brush. I'll put some lines in underneath here because they're there. Um, they do show the difference in the line there going down that other line underneath there. Just thinning that awning up to what I think it should look like. I don't want it too fat. Moon glow, blue, bring those lines in like that. Definitely darker under that awning than on top of it, so I've got to keep remembering where to put the, where, how dark things are. This is actually becoming a study in light and dark. Got such a light sky, such dark underneath here. In. The blue and the burnt umber, back to blue, back to burnt umber. See how dark I've got. Okay, so I virtually want to make this underneath here invisible. I want to make it so black you cannot see what's happening under there at all. That's going to be the mystery of the picture. I like to have a bit of mystery somewhere. It has an aluminium, black aluminium frame on that window, and there's shadows underneath this. that black and bring it down the door. I might just ignore those handles at this stage. I put them in before but I'm not interested now. There, there. So I'm deliberately doing big strokes here to try and hide the, the fussiness that I had there just a minute ago. I'm going to come in with that same darkness that I've just mixed and where am I going to add that? Well, I have got that that door there, which has to have colour there. It has to be down like that. Mm -hmm. I was just going to go all out with this colour up there, but it's I can't really do that. I have to be fairly light in that area. So I think now is time to do a little bit of sketching. Um, I'll get a brush that is controllable but small enough for me to do very um, detailed drawing with the brush and that's kind of what, the, what is required at this stage. So I'll start in the back with an innocent little street light and some details on the cars like wheels if you can see them there. Um, I shall put a couple of spots on the top of that building and there's a chimney there which obviously I didn't put in before, too small. Let's put some windows across the front of it, put some verticals in. I need that road to be very smooth there because it's over a hill. And I'm going down with a sign there, there's a nice black sign. It's got some other signage on it. Oh yes, the people at the back here, make sure I don't forget those. Keep the blackness up, blue, brown, blue again, and the guy standing up there, keep him there. There's a 
telegraph pole right there, which is interesting. I'll put that in later. In so much as I'll scrub that out or I'll add it somehow. I'll put these details in. This particular signage has got a no right turn sign on it. And I've got no, I'll just write down that. So I'll come back with some red on that in a minute. Some little figures standing over the other side, I don't think they're going to be obvious. A couple of more poles. Okay. Um, here I'm going to put some horizontal lines in because I've got those shadows and those people. I'll rinse that out, those out a bit. And this mob here. I always say mob. I don't have any Aboriginal background, but my grandma did. She wasn't Aboriginal, but she, she lived with Aboriginals. So we were always a mob. We had other mobs. My cousins were mobs. I love it. It's not, not much of a connection. It's a little bit of a connection with the, the land. Now, more squares, more blues over there, lots of different colours. Some funny little colours in the background there, I'll put those in. Just notice this colour's iridescent. <laughs> Not keen on iridescence. Now, a little bit of uh, I won't put anything in the middle of that the whiteness there it's too good what I will do is just a little bit of showing that there's stuff hanging out the doorway here and there's patterns on the ground black here. I'm forgetting this gutter. It's beautiful black in there. And that's where you end up with little bits and pieces of, of stuff happening. And you rub it in and you put it in and you take it out again. In a way like I should be doing there, taking some of that out. in and out. Okay. Now with the gouache, there's lots of little spots here. Firstly I want to attack this thing, like this sign. I'm putting it on very thickly there so it doesn't fade away. Other times I can put it on a bit thinner and I know that it will fade out and it won't stay. Some signs back there, road signs. Tops of the cars. And across the streets. A little bit of glistening on that gutter there, and a bit of a glisten here. Let's define that doorway there. I'll put a white edge on those posters just for the sake of defining those. 
Now at the top here, is there anything I can do with, play with? Just thinking sometimes these windows can have a bit of a spruce up with the reflections. Sign. Okay, now a few square signages here. That one there. This one here. This is where I put the door handles back in, in that particular building. Now I'm going to just paint these people here. She can have some a white shirt. And this person sitting down here can have a scarf and a white jacket. And what else? Fiddle fiddle fiddle. There's a person standing over there at the lights waiting patiently tell someone beside them and do, 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 do. some lines under here lots of lines under here to define the, the um, awnings that are oh yeah lovely circle here which I haven't got in yet so I'll have to put the gouache quite thick on that to make that stand out Another one here that I did allow for. Oops, a bit more water in my grass. Another one out there. Okay, dokie. Okay. There's some lines going behind those people there. What happens then, if I think I've done too much whiting, I can go back in with a bit of water and just knock them knock them out a little bit. But at this stage, I'm quite happy with that. But that said, I still need to add, uh, oh yes, just to say how to knock them out a bit. I'll do that on this particular sign there. I, I just need that to be a little bit lighter in there. So I take the white and just blend it blend it back in. It's not going to happen. Okay, I'll load up my white from that brush there. Oh, that looks great. So every now and then then I find something I like like that and I go overboard and oops, I, I do it too much. Knock those out. This one here I can knock out a little bit. Well, and that's fun too, going in there and scrubbing all that, scrubbing out some verticals. Ending up with, the reason I like to do that is you just end up with different tones and colours that you didn't expect to find. Unintentional stuff. So, just because I've got the white on my brush, I'm going to do some scribbles down here like this. Draw the eye in. I imagine they will fade. They're so fine they won't stay obvious. And then of course there's some like that. Underneath there. There's a bit more white out here in the road. Joins in the road. And where the sun hits just catches the edge of the tarmac lifting tiny little bits of interest like that just going to pretty up this sign sure that's the colour it's supposed to be and I'll pretty these up oops, not wet enough it's so hot here today, I'm really struggling to keep these uh, brushes, these the paints wet in my tray. There's a vertical thing happening there. And up the top. A couple of little brown. Mm. It's 
for example just trying to get a little bit of brown on the brush it's just I've got to keep ticking into the wetness because I haven't used them for a while I think that's about it now oh I can see over here there's a pole it's actually an electrical pole how good is that and it's a bit wonky so it's going to be the start of my line we have a line going from it and I have another line going across that way I end up doing a bit of a zigzaggy uh, effort oops I have to be crooked once you do a crooked one there's nothing you can do about it you just got to live with it now that I've said that I'm going to be nervous here we go bigger one now this one here is straight down and straight back and then on this side mm, there you go I've made a mistake there on this side of the building there is another one um, that one's a different mistake but what I can do is go back and make another one behind it a little bit thicker and that way it won't stand out so much but I can't really do it in the same same place I have to go back further right that's sort of my my um, my way of doing little birds in the skies <laughs> some people like to do birds I like to put in the um, the lines so I'll just draw down here a couple of things that I can see I shall go into that there's a bit of plumbing down here no electrical whatever drainage I can see what I've done here. I've come over too wide on this window and I might just scrub it back because you can take that pink out altogether. I haven't looked above. You see, I didn't look up. So I call that a mistake very much. But that said, I'm not going to worry about it in the scheme of things. It doesn't make any difference to the picture. I'll put a little bit more of that yellowy into that. Pretend there's colour on either side. See that window is in the wrong spot altogether. So I'll just colour it up like that. Run that yellow up the top. It can fade away as it goes up. In fact, now that I've done that, I kind of like the idea of intensifying this colour down here on this little. should be doing adding orange to that and then to the fun of it because I'm now in the mood I'm now adding a little bit more yellow down there Theoretically, paler up at the top and stronger towards the base. Hang that into there a little bit, just so it defines it. Otherwise, it might look a bit lost. The same with that green. I'll just clean a bit out there so it's a little bit more gradual. And then, of course, the more you start fiddling, the more you realise you're making an error. That green has to be very, 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 very parallel. So I'll push some orange up into it to make sure it pushes the green out. about it I think I might just add while I've got yellow on my plate I can see some warm colors down in there 
this is where sometimes back of the white wash white white gouache I like to get a little bit of pink and a little bit of orange in there as well with the gouache this lady here has got bags with her feet so I want to put the bags in and I want to put her skin tones in and same with him I know that's being a bit silly now being very silly so anyway I better stop just don't need that sort of detail and the red oh that's what I was going to do with the red there just pick that red out and run it down there like that now and of course you know I have to say to myself hello it's finished because that's when I start to see things that are not finished I call that almost finished <laughs> it'll never be finished look let's face it but this put it this way in a minute I will stop painting that's about the best I can say and I'll just add a little bit of red to that pole because I can Red to the lady because I can. I'll make her jacket pink. And that means I have to put a bit of pink down here, reflecting. Not that it's wet. I don't want to give the impression it's wet. It's just reflecting for the sheer sake that it's shiny ground. Super clean. Okay, so I think I'll call that quits and say that is the Sly Fox Hotel in Sydney. I'm just zooming in some smaller areas, some details, some mistakes, some things that worked okay. You can see how casual it is. I think it was obvious. The people sitting there. And just to show you the carnage that's been left not much paint in some of those pans oh, mess. let's go out this way this is not so messy this is my one little clean corner <laughs> um, bright bright sunny day it is super hot out there it is about 100 degrees um, Fahrenheit 36 37 that's our dam down the back. Anyway, back to my paint desk and that's it. Thank you very much for being with me during this uh, painting. Um, I'll pick it up and show it to you. It's uh, not, too, not too bad, I rather like it. <laughs> and uh, sometimes. Oh. I didn't think I'd be as keen on this smooth paper, but I don't mind it at all. So I'm going to enjoy using that pad. And uh, um, I must ask you if you could like the video and subscribe, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Those numbers mean a lot to me. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Shut up.